Why do you think that is? That they call you an it's Arab Israeli? Aqu- it's aquabation. They don't want Palestinians to exist. That's simple to me. You know, I can, I understand that, but that's not doesn't make it right. This is a Palestinian Bedouin village that's been here since before Israel was created. But the state considers this village illegal and has tried to forcibly remove its residents multiple times. But they've resisted. And that's meant living cut off from basic services. You guys aren't even on the map of Israel. No, we're not. But you're Israeli citizens. Yes, we kind of are. Kind of? Kind of, because uh, officially we are, but that's not how do you, do I feel. I feel so. What do you What do you feel like you are? Uh, first of all, I'm Palestinian. I'm definitely a Palestinian. And if I was an Israeli citizen, then I am a second class or maybe third one. And not because the country doesn't treat me as other citizens, as for example, Jews. Al Zarnug is one of 35 unrecognized Palestinian Bedouin villages, home to around 70,000 people. They've been under constant threat of displacement since Israel's founding in 1948. In 2013, a bill was proposed to evict most of the villagers and force them into government-built townships. In some cases, Jewish communities would replace them. After widespread protest, Israeli officials said they would shelve the plan, but home demolitions have continued, including in Besma's village. What is this structure right here? Well, uh, this is to hide the fact that they're building inside it, you know, because it's illegal to build any any building, any uh, any small, even small room. So if if, uh, if they see it, they'll put it down. So you hide the fact that you're building. So who will put it? Who will put it down? Uh, the state. In fact, just weeks before our visit, Israel demolished homes in the nearby village of El Arakib for the 90th time. So what does it mean to be unrecognized and not be on the map? It's not to have electricity the way it's supposed to be done. It's not to have infrastructures. It's not to have streets the way it's supposed to be. It's not to have sewage systems. It's not to have play yards. Um, All of the children right now, they just play in the wild and that's not good, that's dangerous. What if the people, the residents of the village, wanted to build a playground for the kids? Is that allowed? Putting two stones together is considered illegal. Yeah. Building anything is considered illegal. What is this? This is a solar panel. So you're showing us how the solar panel, yeah, this we, is... You can move it. No way. Yeah. So depending on where the sun is, you yeah. get electricity for the house. Yeah. So these are, these are the batteries that are charging. Yeah. So like on a rainy day or in the winter, you have to rely on this? Yes. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's out. Mm-hmm. It turns out. So you don't have electricity then. Yeah. We're just engaged in a very illegal activity right now. What is it? Yeah. Building a house. There are tens of thousands of people who live exactly like us, and, and they also have to uh, go take this risk. Yeah. Because uh, we don't have any other alternative. I mean, I can't issue, a, I can't go to the Interior Ministry and issue a, 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 a like building permit, because this place doesn't exist for them. Israel says developing the Negev Desert is one of its most important missions. Its Ministry of Foreign Affairs said in a statement that Israel seeks to integrate villagers into its development plans. But residents like Besma read between the lines. What does Israel want with this land, basically? Well, to put Jews on it. Just simply not not Arabs, not Palestinians, because, you know, we're not really welcome here. Because it's new. This is a new house. Yeah. You were saying the roofs, they really are made. Yeah, but, you know, they... uh, they make another uh, construction to cover it, but he didn't do it yet because it's a bit expensive. Yeah. You guys are like constant, like handymen. Yeah. Constant repairs, huh? You must, you know, that's how you live. What does it feel like to constantly have to battle this state just to remain in your home and in your village? That's life. And you just call it resistance, so yeah. My life is, to, you know, I resist to live. That's, that's, I think that, that that's a basic thing every human being uh, do, but simply, you know, we do it differently. Sometimes it's against the wind, sometimes it's against the state. 